this evening. First, big news from President Irfan Ali. Every household in Guyana is set to receive a one-off $200,000 cash grant this year. And there's more to come with Free University of Guyana Education starting from January 2025. Find out how this massive financial relief package will impact you. Plus, ExxonMobil praises Ghana's local content app, highlighting the huge opportunities it has created for local businesses in the booming oil and gas sector. We'll tell you how over 900 companies have already cashed in, with even more job opportunities on the horizon. Also, a cybersecurity month is on the way. Prime Minister Mark Phillips sounds the alarm on protecting Ghana's digital world. With cybercrime on the rise, find out how the government is boosting online security for the nation and what you can do to stay safe. And in recognition of World Mental Health Day, we dive into the importance of mental health at work, learn how safe working environments can protect your well-being, and why it is time to take action for a healthier future. Finally, the Dominican Republic's controversial mass deportation of Haitians is making headlines as nearly 11,000 have been sent back in just one week. We'll break down the reasons behind this sweeping policy and its impact on the region. Stay tuned for this developing situation. These stories and more right here on Headline News Update. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for October 10th, 2024. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, in a special address to the 12th Parliament at the Autochon Convention Center in Georgetown earlier today, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali announced that every household in Guyana will receive a one-off cash grant of $200,000 this year. I also wish to announce now a one-off cash grant of $200,000 to every household in Guyana. A one-off cash grant of $200,000 to every household in Guyana. This will see an injection of $60 billion of disposable income into the Guyanese households countrywide. We will begin this one-off cash grant payment to household instantaneously. The distribution of the funds is set to begin soon. This initiative aims to reduce economic disparities and increase disposable income for citizens, with the government projecting a total infusion of approximately $60 billion into the economy through this cash grant program. The president also announced the Free University of Ghana Education from January 2025. We're proceeding with the delivery of our manifesto commitment to provide free university education at the University of Guyana. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in the interest of the children of Guyana, I pause for greater recognition from this House. <laughs> this House should understand the importance of education and the transformative nature of education. And we must send that signal loudly to every corner of this country. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, accordingly, starting from January 2025 semester, tuition fees will be completely abolished at the University of Guyana. Additionally, a child will get a $10,000 basic healthcare voucher in 2025. In our continued coverage of the president, we now turn to national defense. On Wednesday, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali revealed plans for a new Ghana Defense Force headquarters during the Standard Officers Course No. 55 Commissioning Parade at Base Campaign Ghana, Georgetown. The announcement is part of the government's ongoing efforts to modernize the Ghana Defense Force and support national security. 
President Ali instructed the Chief of Defense Staff, Brigadier Omar Khan, to begin the procurement process for the new facilities design. The modern headquarters is expected to provide a functional workplace for GDF personnel, equipping the force with the necessary resources to protect Ghana's sovereignty. The president highlighted that GDF's process in professionalism and its increasing role in the national and regional development. He lauded the force for its humanitarian aid efforts, particularly supporting Grenada after Hurricane Beryl. President Ali reiterated the government's dedication to building an inclusive military that offers equal opportunities for all ranks to contribute to the nation's success. The new headquarters is expected to enhance the Ghana Defense Force's operational capabilities and provide a spacious environment for officers to work effectively. In other news, since Stanislaus College launched a new science lab, enhances STEM education through contributions from alumni, the government and families, more from Malcolm Carter. St. Stanislaus College launched its new physics and chemistry lab on Tuesday evening, dedicated to the memory of former teacher father Herbert Feeney. The 51 million project, which also includes a renovated staff room, aims to boost STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics education. The initiative was made possible through contributions from alumni, the government of Guyana, and families like the Feenies and Harfords. During the launch, alumnus Dr. Kofi Dalrymple highlighted that over 60% of students are now choosing science subjects, and the new labs will provide essential hands-on learning opportunities to foster critical thinking skills. President Dr. Ifran Ali, another proud alumnus, reflected on how his education at St. Stanislaus shaped his leadership journey. He stressed the importance of aligning education with national development, particularly in rapidly evolving sectors. The president is also committed to contributing 500000 annually to the Debating and Impromptu Speech Awards, furthering the institution's goal of cultivating excellence in communication and debate. President Infran Ali articulated that the institution's strength lies in its ability to nurture well-rounded individuals prepared to contribute meaningfully to society. We don't want this institution only to, be, uh, to, to focus only on academics. The strength of this institution is in creating rounded individuals, is in creating rounded citizens. Minister of Education Priya Manichan mentioned plans for a new three story addition to provide more classrooms and labs, emphasizing the commitment to enhancing educational opportunities. And I'm very happy to say that. Coming soon, and this is a real coming soon, this entire block, stretching all the way to where the building ends, well, the compound ends, will have a three-story um, addition to the school where all of this will be demolished. And classrooms, labs, and uh, staff space will be provided along with other amenities. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. Sikaran will return. ExxonMobil President praises Local Content Act, and Prime Minister highlights urgency of cybersecurity during Cybersecurity Month. The Guyana Elections Commission GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31st, 2024 and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. Types of transactions. Anyone eligible for registration is required to visit the registration office responsible for his or her area of residence to apply for registration. 
Persons who are already registered could apply for a name change if they have changed their names since they were last registered. Apply for corrections if there is incorrect information on their national ID cards. Persons who are desirous of conducting any of the above transactions must provide the relevant supporting documents. Persons who are already registered could request that their photographs be retaken if the quality of the photographs on their ID cards is unacceptable. Collect their new ID cards if they have not done so as yet. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, please contact GCOM on the following hotline numbers 2250277-226-6557-223-9650 or visit the GCOM website at www.gcom.org.gy. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Comiverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. As we mark Cybersecurity Month, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips highlighted the importance of protecting our online world and personal data. With cybercrime expected to cost the global economy over 10.5 trillion US dollars by 2025, more than the illegal drug trade combined, it's crucial to take these threats seriously. Data breaches can cost businesses and governments millions and affect everyone's privacy and safety. Ghana is stepping up its effort to improve cybersecurity. The Prime Minister pointed out that keeping our digital system safe is essential for national security and the economy, helping protect vital services like energy, healthcare, and transportation. In April, the government launched 43 new policies aimed at strengthening our digital security. These policies are designed to make it easier for citizens to access government services and encourage cooperation among agencies. The goal is to build a safer digital space for all Guyanese and to prepare for future challenges. The Prime Minister called on everyone, citizens, businesses and institutions, to take cybersecurity seriously. He emphasized that keeping our online environment safe is a shared responsibility and urged collective action to ensure a secure digital future for Guyana. In other news, ExxonMobil Guyana's president, Alistair Rutledge, lauded Guyana's Local Content Act, emphasizing its role in providing numerous opportunities for Guyanese businesses and citizens in the oil and gas sector. Speaking at the press conference on Wednesday, Rutledge highlighted the Act's significance in ensuring local participation in the industry. The Local Content Act, passed in 2021, outlines a framework for foreign companies, mandating that a percentage of goods and services in 40 subsectors, including transportation, accommodation, legal services, and marketing, be sourced from Guyanese businesses. Rotledge noted that the Act has facilitated partnership between foreign firms and local businesses, creating job opportunities and contributing to economic growth. 
with over 900 local companies registered under the Local Content Secretariat, Guyanese businesses have collectively earned nearly 1 billion US dollars. ExxonMobil has committed to expanding opportunities with new areas such as transportation and administrative support set to open up by year end. Today is World Mental Health Day, and this year's theme focused on the need for safe, supportive work environments. Markup Carter has more details. World Mental Health Day, celebrated on October 10th annually, this is an international day dedicated to promoting mental health education, raising awareness, and advocating against the stigma surrounding mental health issues. Initiated by the World Federation for Mental Health in 1992, this day is observed globally and aims to foster understanding and support for mental health across more than 150 countries. Mental Health Day 2024 is being observed under the theme, Mental Health at Work. The World Health Organization is collaborating with partners to emphasize the crucial link between mental health and the workplace. Safe and healthy working environments can significantly protect mental health. With 60% of the global population currently in the workforce, urgent action is required to mitigate risk to mental health and to support employees effectively. Addressing mental health at work should involve the meaningful participation of workers, their representatives, and individuals with lived experiences of mental health conditions. By investing in evidence-based approaches and interventions, we can create environments where everyone has the opportunity to thrive both at work and in life. Let us take action today for our mental health and a healthier future. Reporting for Headline News, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. Don't go away after the break. Europe against war. Protesters march to demand a ceasefire. And Pakistan floods hit schools. 230,000 children are still missing lessons. GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. It is the civic duty and legal responsibility of all persons who meet the eligibility requirements to apply for registration. By doing so, you will be ensuring that you are are issued a national identification card and be included in the official lists of electors for future elections, providing you meet all eligibility criteria. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact the GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. <laughs> Modern Optical Services. 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 Modern Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinveld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years.
Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. The Dominican Republic has deported nearly 11,000 Haitians in the past week as it starts to implement a controversial mass repatriation policy, Al Jazeera's Zain Bashrave reports. The message from the Dominican Republic is clear. Haitians fleeing the violence at home should not seek refuge with their more prosperous neighbor. The two countries share the island of Hispaniola, but relations have long been hostile. And this week, the Dominican Republic began mass deportations of thousands of Haitians. We have been informed that the police are the ones carrying out the operations. It is a kind of persecution against black people and against all those who are presumed to be Haitians. The gang violence and poverty, synonymous with Haiti, are getting worse. Only last week, in the latest symptomatic horror, gang members entered a neighborhood of pont saint in the dead of night, setting fire to houses and gunning down residents as they fled. At least 70 people were killed, including three small babies. Struggling to cope with the return of thousands of people, Haiti requested an emergency meeting at the Organization of American States. Despite our efforts at dialogue, we report grave violations of the rights of Haitian citizens in the Dominican Republic, Haitians who went there looking for security and better opportunities. The international community agrees this policy of deportation is what it really is, a campaign of discrimination based on nationality and skin color. It's immoral and reprehensible and in direct violation of fundamental international rights. The Dominican Republic said on Tuesday it is fulfilling a pledge announced last week to deport people living there illegally. At least half a million Haitians live in the Dominican Republic, trying to escape a country in collapse. And a UN-backed mission led by Kenyan police that launched earlier this year is facing a serious lack of funds and manpower. Zain Basravi, Al Jazeera. Internationally, a string of marches took place throughout Europe in solidarity with the Palestinian people. The war generated mass protest movements, even when bans were imposed to prevent them, Al Jazeera's Sonia Gallego reports. A year of demonstrations in a time of upheaval. During the turmoil of war, a mass movement has swept across the European continent. From Berlin, to Brussels, freeze, freeze, to Barcelona, people have gathered to oppose Israel's war on Gaza. Even defying bans as Italy's government attempted to impose, provoking anger and violence between police and protesters. In the UK, the marches have become the largest protest movement seen in recent years, with thousands from all walks of life taking part, moved by the seemingly endless scenes of death and destruction. Colleagues of those killed while working to save lives in Gaza under deteriorating conditions. Their voices, an essential insight into the immense challenges faced by healthcare workers there. What we're seeing is a deliberate attack on the healthcare infrastructures across Palestine and now in Lebanon. And it's just devastating because we had uh, worked to strengthen the healthcare system and to build certain programs uh, so that Palestinians had the right to access quality uh, healthcare that was equitable. With no end to the destruction, many fear that the West's seeming inability to enable a ceasefire is fueling the war. A year on, and as the war continues and has even crossed borders, there is a definitive sense of frustration here at these demonstrations that not nearly enough is being done by the British government in order to bring about a succession of hostilities as well as peace negotiations. Stephen Kaposch, a Jewish Holocaust survivor, has regularly attended these rallies. Together with his family and other survivors' relatives, he protests against what he says Israel is doing to justify its war on Gaza. I, I had to wear the yellow star even though I was seven years old. And uh, it just sickened me to, to see this misuse. This 
of the memory of the Holocaust. One year on, and as the seemingly endless cycle of terror and pain continues in Gaza and beyond, the message from the streets to those caught in the conflict, they are not forgotten. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera, London. UNICEF has raised the alarm about the worsening education crisis in Pakistan's Sindh province. Floods and heavy monsoon rain damaged more than 1,300 schools two years ago. Al Jazeera's Kamal Haider reports. It's another day of lessons for these girls in Tando Bago, a town in Pakistan's Sindh province. Their temporary classroom is a small thatched hut donated by a widow. There are no chairs, desks or even mats and no proper shelter from the sun. It isn't much, but students and teachers alike are grateful to have a school at all. These children were thrilled when their school reopened after three years of floods. But for many, education remains a distant dream, as schools have closed or moved to temporary makeshift settings due to a lack of infrastructure and resources. Their old school is still surrounded by stagnant water, left by the most recent monsoon rains. Many houses here don't have running water or electricity, and families can't afford basic necessities. We are very poor and struggling to survive. Sending our children to school feels impossible. Rampant corruption and lack of accountability has raised questions about the safety of poorly constructed buildings at a time of record-breaking floods and monsoon rains. UNICEF says almost a quarter of a million students are out of school after the devastating floods two years ago, as well as the recent monsoon rains, which have left extensive damage to thousands of schools. The agency says the government needs to address the deepening crisis. This is a quite serious issue because um uh, they're missing out on school and education, and I think um, we need to make sure this does not happen. The simple reason is because the schools were flooded. We need to have schools that are resilient, so when the next flood comes, they're not flooded. In another village nearby, boys and girls are having their lessons under some trees. The flood destroyed their school and there's no indication it will be rebuilt anytime soon. But for these children, a classroom is more than just a space to learn. It's their hope for the future. I dream of becoming a doctor, but without a school or proper facilities, how will that be possible? The UN says Pakistan needs a comprehensive plan to tackle growing illiteracy, and that will require national consensus across the political divide. Kamal Haider, Al Jazeera, Tando Bago, Sindh Province, Pakistan. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that's Safety with 2 Headline News for this Thursday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other. <laughs>